Over the last year, we've experienced floods, droughts, a lot of snow, and of course, record storms. And that's just here in the United States. And the exceptional weather causing a number of commodities to spike over the year. So will we see the weather events repeat next year? And what does that mean for commodities? Here to tell us in part is Jeff Masters, co-founder and director of meteorology at weatherunderground.com and Sterling Smith, a commodity analyst at Country Hedging. Jeff, let's start with you on the weather. Jeff, you ran through a list of the weather events over the past year in 20. I'd forgotten some of them, like the floods in Tennessee, the flooding in Australia and so forth. It was an extraordinary year and the hottest year on record. That's right. When you put together everything that happened last year, it just boggles the mind. So many unprecedented events all packed into a very short period of time. You know, we have just begun here in the United States the hurricane season, which continues, I believe, until the 30th of November, though most of the storms occur sort of August, September into October. What is your forecast for hurricanes hitting the United States mainland this year? On average, we can expect, say, three hurricanes to hit the U.S., and ocean temperatures are quite warm again this year in the main development region for these storms. So I think at least an average, probably an above average year, three storms is a good bet. We've been very lucky since, uh, I guess, really 2005, though I guess there were some in 2006, uh, with respect to hurricanes. D does, does the trend suggest that our luck is going to run out? <laughs> Well, we've gone five years without a Category 3 or stronger hurricane hitting the U.S., and that's unprecedented, or it's at least tied for that. So if we went this year, that'd be the longest stretch on record without a major hurricane. We're, so we're it doesn't change at, the odds. We're looking at major okay. flooding now in the uh, upper uh, central part of the country, uh, North Dakota uh, and thereabouts, Nebraska as well. But let's talk about heat. Uh, how hot is Earth this year? It's about the 10th warmest on record, and last year we were the warmest on record, so it's come down a little bit. And, and does this mean, this increase in heat, uh, and of course everybody talks about global warming, I don't mean to get into a debate about that, but tell me from a, a meteorological standpoint what this rising temperature means for investable commodities and the like. When you have a hotter atmosphere, that means you have more energy to power extreme events. You can have hotter heat waves, you can have more intense droughts, you can have more severe rainfall leading to more intense floods. So a lot of extremes means a lot more risk. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you later in the year. So what does all this crazy weather mean for commodities in particular? Sterling Smith is a commodity analyst with Country Hedging. Nice to see you again, Sterling. Thank you for joining us on the show. What? Well, good morning, Simon. How are you this morning? I'm, I'm good, sir. Thank you. What foodstuffs in particular, as we move forward, do you think are likely to be most impacted by the sort of weather patterns that we just spoke about? Well, any crop can be impacted by a weather pattern. You know, we have orange juice at risk. Um, <clears throat> you know, down in Florida, if we see a hurricane land in the right places, we have obviously energy assets there that are very much at risk. If you look at the foodstuff items in particular, look at the ones with tight supplies. Corn and soybeans, we have very, very short supplies of these. If we do see, you know, very much damaging heat over the course of this summer, that could certainly hurt harvest. Uh, and our yields. If we see bad weather at harvest time, that could impact a crop that's already been troubled by delayed plantings in a lot of areas. Where are you on sugar at the moment? Sugar, right at the moment, I'm a little bit bearish. We had an unexpected run up in sugar. We're seeing the Brazilian crop come in. The monsoonal season in India is starting right now, and that's critical for sugar supplies because we need to see whether India is going to be actually a net exporter or a net importer. If they have problems with their monsoon, that could push prices higher. But we've had two years in a row of trouble with the monsoonal rains in India. So this year, I'm of the opinion that we're going to see a normal rainfall, and that may work to be bearish on sugar. I'm also not terribly friendly cocoa right now. If you could leave investors with one thought briefly, if you would, because we're out of time, what would you say to them? Buy breaks and cover your risk and handle it because weather markets are the most volatile kind of market there is to handle. Sterling Smith, it's always great to talk to you. Thank you for your time, sir. I don't think, Tyler, in this country, as a foreigner, that there is much discussion about global warming. No, really, it, it, it has been. The rest of the world yeah. would love to see America have that conversation. And yeah. No, it is it a, it's it a political there. hot button here, and people just don't people want to go there. Too scared to mention it.